Hey everybody, it's Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. For my last couple of weeks this trip in Cairo, I opted to rent an apartment instead of staying at a hotel. So in this video, I'm going to show you the apartment that I'm renting in downtown, and I'm gonna talk about what are the benefits and what are the drawbacks to renting an apartment versus getting a hotel during your Egypt adventure. Let's start with the tour. This particular apartment is pretty small, but it's got everything I need, and I've been really happy here so far. Here is the entryway and living space, and let's head on into the kitchen. The kitchen had almost everything I needed. I needed to purchase a couple of kitchen utensils for cooking, but otherwise everything here functions, and a lot of the appliances are actually newer in this apartment, which is great. And I've been able to cook a lot, which has been really helpful. Here is one of the bedrooms, and that door there goes out onto the balcony. This bedroom has a fan. You might notice this Wi-Fi router on the table. That has been really, really nice at this apartment to have Wi-Fi during my stay. Internet has worked perfectly. Here's the bathroom. This apartment has hot water. It's got a washing machine that I've been using during my stay. The bathroom has everything that I need. And then here is the master bedroom with a double-sized bed. Pretty uncommon to see that in an apartment in Cairo wardrobe, a TV, and here's my favorite part. I've got this balcony out here. It doesn't have the most amazing view, but it's still nice to be able to sit here, get some work done on my laptop, have a coffee or have a bite to eat, and get to enjoy the sounds of the traffic outside, the activity, the people, and to get some sun. And here is the location for the apartment. It's the blue dot. I'm gonna zoom out and show you just how central it is. I'm right by downtown Cairo in Tahrir Square, only about a 10 minute walk. I'm also right next to one of my favorite koshery restaurants I'm zooming in right now, Koshery Abu Tarek. Um, really dangerous to be this close to that koshery place. Now that you've seen my apartment in Cairo, I wanna talk about how much the apartment costs, what the benefits are to renting an apartment versus staying in a hotel, what the drawbacks are, and how you can go about renting an apartment when you come to Egypt on your own Egypt adventure. This apartment costs me 425 Egyptian pounds per night. That is less than 30 US dollars. It's, it's right around 28 US dollars per night. That doesn't include any well, that doesn't include, I don't have to pay any taxes or any um, fees on top of that. This is not an Airbnb, so I don't have to pay a service fee or a cleaning fee or anything like that. It's just a flat 28 US dollars per night, which for me is a pretty good price. There are apartments out there in Cairo that are cheaper. There are apartments out there that are more expensive. This one is 425 Egyptian pounds per night. One of the really good benefits of this apartment is that the host allowed me to put 1,000 pounds down for my stay of 17 nights and then to pay the rest via credit card, which is really nice. I didn't have to have all of that cash on me. So that's how much I'm paying for the apartment. For me, the benefits of renting a flat in downtown Cairo instead of doing a hotel is really, really beneficial for a longer stay in Egypt. I'm able to use the kitchen so I can have my coffee in the morning, I can cook my breakfast before I get ready for the day. I'm able to save a lot of money and just time having to go eat out every meal can really, you know, in Egypt things are really affordable, but after a while you start spending a lot on eating out and it just takes a lot of time to go to a restaurant for every single meal versus just being able to whip something up in the kitchen. And it's just convenient. So the kitchen is a big draw for me. Another big draw is that this apartment has really stable internet. Sometimes at hotels, especially more budget options, it can be hard to have good Wi-Fi, or if you do have good Wi-Fi, there might be five or six people on it that are using up the bandwidth. Whereas at an apartment like this, you have that all to yourself. So kitchen, good internet, Another thing I like is just having privacy. It's nice to be able to have my own bathroom all to myself, to be able to have two bedrooms. I have a lot of space. I have my own balcony. 
Um, and it's just a lot more private than if I were staying at a hotel, especially a budget property like a hostel. And it's, it's really not much more money to get a single room in an apartment, or excuse me, to get a single room in a hotel in Cairo. It's usually around the 400 pound mark for a similar location as this apartment. So it's really about the same price and way more privacy. Getting a bed in a hostel is way cheaper, of course. You can get a bed in a hostel for 200 Egyptian pounds or less, but that's a totally different experience because you're sharing a room with usually five other people and sharing a bathroom and so on. So, Wi-Fi, kitchen. Some people really like having the TV. I don't personally watch TV, so that's not a big draw for me. But I also really like the convenience of just being able to leave my stuff at the apartment and then to just go off wherever I want to go. I'm gonna be heading to Alexandria in a few days to visit friends and to see some things up there. And it's just nice knowing that the apartment locks, I have the key, I can leave all my stuff in here, lock the door, go away for a couple of days, come back, and I don't need to worry about my place. Versus if I stay at a hotel, just worrying about, you know, are they going to need to clean it while I'm gone? Are they going to go into the room while I'm gone? It's nice to just have my apartment and be able to know that this space is secure. So for me, those are the big benefits of having an apartment in Cairo. It's really, really good for a longer term stay. So now let's talk about the drawbacks, or in other words, reasons why you might rather stay in a hotel versus renting an apartment like I'm doing right now. One of the big drawbacks to renting an apartment is if you're having a shorter term stay, like if you're only going to be in Cairo for two, three, or four nights, getting an apartment usually takes a bit more legwork than just booking a hotel. If you're staying at a hotel, you can go to a website like booking.com or you can message the hotel directly, or if it's an international brand like Marriott or like Hilton, you can book on their website. And you can make sure that you book your room, that everything's ready to go, and that you have a space, and you pretty much will know what the quality is going to be like before coming. When you rent an apartment, you're often needing to text individual brokers or owners, set up a time to meet with them, go to the apartment, and I always recommend that people check out a place before putting any money down because it might not be what it was advertised as, or they might have sent pictures that are outdated, or it might be dirty, or something might not work. So it usually takes a little bit more legwork to get an apartment. I tell folks that they need to kind of add in like one or two days of wiggle room just in case their place that they had lined up prior to coming doesn't work out, or the host is not able to meet with them, or they don't have the availability. And this even goes for Airbnb. I'll just give you an example. I messaged a host on Airbnb a few days before getting this apartment because I wanted to set up a stay at their place. Their apartment looked great, it had good reviews, the price was good, but the host just never got back to me. And the host on Airbnb same kind of problem people have with apartments. They might have pictures up of their place. They might say, oh, it includes this, this, this. You get to the Airbnb and it doesn't match up with what the pictures say. Stuff doesn't work like it should. You might not want to stay at the place anymore. So renting an apartment, whether it's renting it through a broker or an owner like I'm doing or going through Airbnb, you usually need to have a little bit more wiggle room. So it kind of makes a shorter term stay not a viable option for getting an apartment, in my opinion. So that's drawback number one. Drawback number two is for people who want something that's super duper budget, like staying out of bed in a hostel, an apartment's going to be more expensive. On the flip side though, you could split an apartment with two or three people and then your cost is going to probably be cheaper than it would be in a hostel and you have to share the space with fewer people. The last drawback that I can think of is that an apartment doesn't give you the same protections that you have with a hotel, especially when you're staying at an international brand. When you go to a hotel, if something goes wrong, you can complain to somebody, you have management, you have people on the property 24 seven who can help you out. When you're at an apartment, you're really at the mercy of the person who's managing or owning the property. Now, the person I'm gonna share their contact with for this video, Hassan, is amazing. He's responded to all of my WhatsApp messages within a few hours. He's helped me out when I've had any questions about the place. I haven't had any problems, so I haven't needed to test his problem-solving capability, but I'm sure it's great. 
But if you are at an apartment, you're really at the mercy of the host or the owner or the broker. If something ends up not working at the apartment or going haywire, there's not this nice little contractor clause where you can get your money back. You might not be able to get a hold of somebody right away if the electricity goes out or if the washing machine stops functioning. Whereas if you're at a hotel, there's always somebody there 24 seven that can help you out in case something goes wrong. Even with Airbnb, Airbnb is probably a step up above just renting an apartment through a broker because you can complain to Airbnb's portal itself and hopefully get some help through the website. Although it's not as easy as it is with a hotel. So to me, those are really the main drawbacks is potentially if something goes wrong, kind of being out of luck, um, having it be a little bit more expensive than a super budget stay like a hostel, and just needing to have some extra time to get everything set up with an apartment, so needing to have a day or two of wiggle room for those shorter term stays, it's usually not a viable option. Now that we've talked about the benefits of an apartment, how much it costs, and the drawbacks, I want to tell you how you can go about getting an apartment for your Egypt adventure. So first of all, I'm going to drop in the video details below the contact information for Hassan. Hassan is the guy who set me up in this great flat for my 17 days stay. Hassan is available via WhatsApp or email. He has multiple properties in different parts of Cairo at different price points. So you can send him a WhatsApp or an email ahead of your trip to try to set up a stay and then you can meet him right away when you get to Cairo and hopefully get a good apartment to stay at. So that's option number one. Another option, I'm gonna drop in the video description the link to a couple of different Facebook groups that you can post on. These groups are usually more for longer term rentals, so people who are gonna be staying in a place for one month or more, but you might be able, for probably a more expensive rent, be able to work out a deal to stay in an apartment on one of these Facebook groups for a week or two weeks or three weeks. My only caution with these Facebook groups is that you really don't know who you're meeting, so you should exercise caution, try to get somebody's phone number, try to make sure you're getting recent, up-to-date pictures of the apartment, because sometimes what happens on these websites or Facebook groups is you have a bait and switch, where somebody sends you an apartment, the pictures look great, the price is too good to be true, the location is central, and then you get there and it's a completely different apartment from what the pictures are. So just exercise caution when contacting people on these Facebook groups. So Hassan's contact info is below. A couple of different groups are below that you can post on. Airbnb is another option, of course. I've used it a couple of times with different degrees of success. So I'd recommend checking out Airbnb. And then a fourth option is, have you rented an apartment in Cairo or do you know somebody who has an apartment? I'd love it if you could drop in the comment section for this video anybody's contact information. I want to get in touch with people so that I can build kind of a network of either brokers or owners in Cairo so that I can have some more options for folks when they come to Egypt if they'd like to rent apartments. So that's it for this video. It was a little bit of a longer one. I hope you found the information useful. We talked about what an apartment and renting an apartment is like in Cairo. We talked about the cost, the benefits, the drawbacks, and how you could rent an apartment when you come to Egypt on your own Egypt adventure. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Gus with Egypt Adventures Travel. Until next time, bye-bye. Check us out on Instagram or Facebook at Egypt Adventures Travel or go to www.egyptadventurestravel.com.